united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. I'm Pastor Tim Thompson, Mountain View Baptist Church. Welcome, United with Christ. So glad to be with you today. Praise God. Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you today for your word. We thank you for, for this television station, Father, that, um, that preaches Jesus. And Father, we just thank you, Father, for, for uh, the ability to use the airwaves, Father, to get the message of Jesus Christ out to a dying world that needs you. Father, I pray today that the words that are shared, this message that is shared will be your message and not mine. Father, we pray for, for, uh, for anointed ears, minds, and spirits and soul to be to anointed by your Holy Spirit to receive what you have for us. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen and amen. All right, so I, I decided to play that bluegrass song, so I wore my hat. I wore my hat today. Today's message is we're talking about learning from a king's mistakes. We all make mistakes. <laughs> I know that to be true. I know I've made my share. We all make mistakes. How can we learn from our mistakes? You know, George Washington uh, said that we should learn from history and that we should should adjust, if you will. I'm paraphrasing. I'm timaphrasing, if you will. That we should adjust and, and learn from the mistakes of our past, from our history. And we can learn uh, from, from accounts in the Bible, the mistakes that people made in the Bible that, that, that's recorded. And uh, that's, that's why it's there, for, so we can increase our, our wisdom and our knowledge and, and, and move forward in his ways. Amen. Let's start from a king's mistake today. As, as if, you, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, turn to Daniel chapter 3 in the Old Testament, Daniel chapter 3. And we're going to focus on, on verses 1 through 9. <clears throat> and I urge, you to, I urge you to do this, um, if you would. Take time to do this um, so you can follow along and um, see for yourself what God has to say, what the Bible has to say about what this man is talking about today. Amen. Challenge me. Please do. Praise God. We're looking at Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, the mistakes that he made and how we as Christians today can learn from the mistakes that Nebuchadnezzar made. Uh, we're going to call this mis learning from mistakes made from a king. These allergies are killing me. I get these itch, this itchy nose. Please pardon me. So uh, let me ask you this question today. How is your shine? How is your shine today? Daniel 3, 1 through 9. As we turn to chapter 3 in the book of Daniel, I want to give you a little background here. We, it's been 17 years. 17 years since, um, since Aria, uh, Ariox the captain of the Babylonian guard has brought Daniel into the presence of the king so that Daniel might tell the king the troublesome dreams he had, his dream, and give him the interpretation. Understand this, that Nebuchadnezzar didn't really remember the dream. He knew it was a disturbing dream. He was disturbed. So when he went to all his magicians and all his wise men, and um, conjurers and all that, uh, he said, you must tell me what the dream is and then give me the interpretation. But that was too much for them. They said, they said oh, king, we can't, we can't do that. No, there's no one alive that can do that. We can tell us your dream so we may interpret it. But the truth is, is by all accounts, the king really... Didn't rem all he remembered about this dream probably was that it was very disturbing. It was very disturbing. He had no idea what it was about. So the king, after hearing Daniel, 
telling the dreams and their interpretation, fell down on his feet to Daniel and he said this, truly, this is what the king said, Nebuchadnezzar, truly your God is the God of all, a God of gods, the Lord of kings and a, a revealer, a revealer of the secrets since you could reveal this dream. So I want to call your attention to one part of what the king said. The Lord of the kings, the Lord of kings. Nebuchadnezzar said this. Nebuchadnezzar called Daniel's God the Lord of kings. That's an important point with this. I want you to remember that. What is Nebuchadnezzar's role in Babylon? He's the king of Babylon, right? So you hear what the king is saying. Daniel's God is literally over me. He's over me. Do you know what we say as Christians? That's what we say, isn't it? God is over us. You are the Lord of my life. You are over me. Praise God. That's what we say. We say the same thing that Nebuchadnezzar proclaimed right there at that moment, right there in Daniel. But 17 years have passed, and as we enter into chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar is not only acknowledging uh, that Daniel's God is over him, uh, he's not really doing that anymore. He's no longer doing that. 17 years later, seven, that's a long time in human years. It's not a long time for God. But in human years, 17 years is a pretty good spread. Uh, maybe, just maybe, so much time has passed and things have gone on like as usual, status quo in his kingdom, that Nebuchadnezzar himself has grown dull. He's grown dull to what God has said to him. Or, or may, perhaps, maybe, maybe, just maybe, he might just be in total disobedience. Just saying, you know what? I know what I said. I said that God is over me, but it's been 17 years. Things have been going on the same. Everything's fine. Everything's hunky-dory. I'm just going to be disobedient. Yeah, premeditated disobedience. Not a safe place to be. Amen? Amen. See, he's not forgotten what God said, says, but he just doesn't care. I remember it was pretty phenomenal what happened. 17 years. I've grown dull. He's dull. That's total disobedience, folks. Total disobedience. So let me ask you, do you know that as Christians, I'm talking to Christians out there now. If you're not a Christian, talk among yourselves. Christians, I'm talking to you right now. We can grow dull to the things of God, can't we? We really can. And it's a, it's a dangerous place to be. Such a dangerous place to be. And I know as Christians, we can be totally disobedient to what God says. I know because I've been there. And probably so have you. But I can only speak for me. And I'll tell you for a fact, I have been disobedient, and I'm not proud of it, but I have. So just like King Nebuchadnezzar, we can find ourselves in the same, the same position, the same spot, so we can learn from his mistakes. This is something in God's Word. We can learn from everything in God's Word. But this is so obvious right now that we can really learn from this, from his mistakes, so that we don't make them in our lives. Amen? King Nebuchadnezzar's mistakes, they don't have to be our mistakes. Praise God. Praise God. So let's look at it. Here's, uh, if you have your Bibles, I'm reading from the New King James Version, uh, beginning with chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width was six cubits. He set it up 
in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps. These were government officials, if you will, satraps and administrators, same officials, and governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come and uh, to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of this image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, the lyre, and the psaltery, uh, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whosoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Ch uh, verse 7 says, So at the time when all people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre, in symphony, with all kinds of music, all people, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. So we're going to stop there. Well, we all know that, uh, that Daniel refused to do that. He refused to, to, to fall down and worship anything except the God, the true God, his God, Jehovah. Amen. Uh, uh, I am Yahweh. Praise God. So my, uh, kind of brings me to my first point today. Nebuchadnezzar's mistake, because that's what we're trying to learn from, right? Nebuchadnezzar's mistakes. So this first mistake is that he grew dull to what God had revealed to him. And he forgot his response to God because this king spent no more time with Daniel's God. See, he received this from God and it was like, oh, well, thank you. See ya, <laughs> right? 17 years later. Of course, he grew dull. He grew dull. And that's a lesson for us today. It really is. We need to be on guard to keep, to keep reading God's word, to keep praying, to, to, to keep um, seeking our Lord. Uh, we don't want to grow dull in our life. Uh, we're not told after Daniel revealed the dreams and the interpretations that the king requested. More time with Daniel to find out more about Daniel's God. There's nothing about that in there. So it was, but you know, it would seem to me, wouldn't you want to know more about this God who knew your dreams, all right, and their interpretation? Wouldn't you want to know more about this God? We're not told that the king sought out Daniel to seek any more advice uh, from his God or how to rule his kingdom. He certainly didn't seek advice of Daniel's God about building that statue, did he? No. We're told that 17 years have passed and the king had seen no threat from the Medes or the Persians and he's still on his throne. So he decides to make an image of himself 90 feet high, 9 feet wide, all gold and have the people bow down to this statue. He's so dull that to God that he's saying, it isn't going to happen like like uh, Daniel's God said. So he kind of lost faith in the interpretation, did he not? So we as Christians, if we don't watch out, we can become so dull to what God has to say to us when we read uh, what God's word says and, and, and just kind of think, well, this is not going to happen. You know, I heard somebody in my church say, you know, I've, I've 
I've heard since I was a little kid that we're living in the last days. So? <laughs> so we are. We are living in the last days. What that, what that, well, I don't know what that means, but I know we're living in the last days, and he's coming back, and we better be ready. Amen? Don't let yourself, don't let us get dull in our belief, in our faith, in our closeness to God. Amen? How do you become dull? How, does, how do we become dull as Christians? Uh, do, you, do you think that, uh, that if we quit praying, that'll make us dull? Well, yeah, absolutely. Do you think if, if we don't read our Bible, that we'll become dull? Of course, of course. Do you think that, that if we break fellowship or don't have fellowship with other church members at church and believers, that we'll become dull? Absolutely, absolutely. And here's the danger. Here's the danger of being dull. You don't know how far you will move away from God. Amen? You just don't know. I would say Nebuchadnezzar making an image of himself to be worshipped is moving a long ways from where God wants him to be. Amen? Christians, guard against growing dull. Learn from the mistakes of a king. Point two, Nebuchadnezzar's mistake is that he wanted his heaven right now, right now, here on earth. It was, he wasn't going to wait for some heaven uh, Daniel's God promised in the future. Wow. And this lesson for us is we better examine ourselves to be sure that we're not trying to set up our own little heaven, if you will, right now, rather than waiting for the heaven that God has promised us. It wasn't enough for Nebuchadnezzar to be king, to be the most of the most powerful nation, um, empire, if you will, in, in the whole world at the time. He wanted to know that it would be like, what it would be like to be God over all the people, to be Lord. In his mind, with, with uh, kingship over all the land he possessed, and now to demand the admiration of everybody in his kingdom by forcing them to bow down to his statue. Nebuchadnezzar's thinking, well, I'm going to know what heaven feels like on earth. There's a Kane Brown song. It's kind of a, kind of a country song and a new country song called Heaven, you know. Um, and he's talking about being with his woman, right, that, that this is heaven, you know, that, that this is heaven. Uh, everybody's talking about heaven, what a great place it is to go, but this is heaven for me. See, we, we've got to be careful not to set up our own heaven on earth because it doesn't compare to what God's got, got for us as Christians. It doesn't even compare. And we as Christians, if we don't watch it, we're going to do everything in our power to try to set up our own little heaven right here on earth, right now. Wrong thing to do. Wrong thing to do. Jesus knew that we were going to try to do that. He knew that. So he warns us in the Sermon on the Mount. Listen to what he says in Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where the thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor dust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, do you think, do you think the man uh, in the parable Jesus gave who wanted to build a bigger barns and, and his abundant crop was trying to have his own heaven on earth? I'd say yes. Do you think the rich young ruler who came to Jesus to be saved but couldn't give his riches away, had his own little heaven on earth? Well, for sure. Do you think that Judas, who sold out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, was trying to build his own heaven on earth? Absolutely. The Bible calls us sojourners, which means that we are just passing through. That's why I picked that song this morning. This world is not our home. We're only passing through. Heaven is our home. Hallelujah. Point three, uh, the king's mistake was to give ear to the wrong people. Listen to the wrong folks. The Chaldeans let the king down in the past, but he's still listening to them. That's interesting, isn't it? Scripture is silent about the king listening to Daniel and his companions. So 
This is a lesson for us. He's chosen to listen to the wrong folks, the Chaldeans, over Daniel and his friends. I can't see um, Daniel and his friends recommending to the king something as bizarre as building a statue of himself and having the world bow down and worship him. Amen? Or the statue. Amen? I can't see... Um, I can't see Daniel and his friends recommending that to the king at all. I, what I know is the wrong people have the king's ears. And right now, people are shut out. Amen? The right people are shut out. The wrong people have the attention and the, and the audience of the, of the king, while the right people that he should be listening to are shut out. Now listen to this. We as Christians, if we don't watch it, if we don't watch it, we, we can find, easily find ourselves listening to the wrong people and shutting out the right people. Consider this, Christians. Consider this. First of all, we need to be hearing from the Spirit. Amen? We need to be guided by the Spirit, the Spirit of God that lives within us from the moment we become saved, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says it, he who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Amen? So we need to listen to the Spirit. Secondly, we need to be hearing from men and women who are godly, whose lives are being lived for the Lord. Amen? You'll know them. You'll know them by their fruit. Hallelujah. The Bible says that. You will know them by their fruit. We need to be listening to men and women who are godly, not the world. The world has a different narrative. This culture has a different narrative right now. We need to listen to God's people, God's word, the Holy Spirit. We need to be driven by that. Think about what you hear. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Thirdly, I need to filter out advice to me by people whose lives are not lived for Christ. They haven't given themselves good advice, so certainly they can't give me good advice. Amen? Amen. Listen, be careful where you get your advice. Be careful where you get your advice. Read God's word. Pray, seek God's Holy Spirit in your life. Be guided by the Spirit. Take counsel from godly people and ask yourselves this question. Are we going to learn from the mistakes of kings like Nebuchadnezzar or will we find ourselves making the exact same mistakes? Oh, please, don't let yourself do that. Amen. Have a great day. Thank you.